On today's show, we break down a big weekend of football. All the studs, all the duds, including my guy, Trey McBride. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now. Leave us some comments about how great Trey McBride is. And enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday episode, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, the Rapscallion and Deucer's Alley today, and a uh, lot to talk about. I can tell you this at the top, after 16 years in the same division, we're finally seeking division realignment in our league of record. Says and, you. And this <laughs> is for the sake of this podcast. Yes. <laughs> for the sake <laughs> For the sake of our friendship, yeah, we for need the it. sake of our lives, we need it. Jason and I are we we've taken it from just enemies to mortal enemies yeah. in the last like few weeks. Oh man, because we're fighting for like one playoff spot among the two of us. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And uh, every little move and nuanced uh, trade. Oh, you know, every little tiny thing it, like waking up Sunday morning and having. Your opponent received Josh Jacobs when he had nobody good to start. Um, and that was traded from by my division mate, Andy. Uh, it's yeah. always better to use the show for our, our uh, <laughs> couples counseling. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we're, we're looking at it. We're looking into it. We're seeing if people are interested. I don't know if you're a yes vote, Mike. I'm, I don't care. That vote. sounds like a yes to me. <laughs> vote yes. I don't care. But mostly because I'm not a big baby. Hmm. Jason well, is the biggest of babies. Like, I'm I am in the baby. I'm like I'm in the nursery. Like but Jason I need the special Jason care. Has the I'm in the I, you were in the nursery together, but the worker <laughs> yeah, is with me. The worker's with you're, you. You're on your own yeah. over there cuz she's got to coddle me. You need snacks, a lot <laughs> oh, yeah. of snacks. I mean um but I mean hey, welcome in. This is the show. We are fighting <laughs> tooth and nail for the playoffs. Uh all three of our teams now, Mike. We're we had the yeah, same record. That's that's what's so funny about it is, you're like, oh, it's my division. Like I'm in the exact same spot as you guys. Yeah. Like, we're all going to be tied. It is funny. We, we, I, Andy and I are fighting not, for one spot. Andy and I are not fighting for the division title. That's kind of already gone. So it is truly the three of us that are all exactly in the same position. We're just fighting for record and points against each other. Mm -hmm. More than likely. One of the three of us gets in. <laughs> yeah. Possible two of the three of Correct. us gets it's in. Correct. It's probably one. One person for sure miserable. You, for sure. Yes. Yes. All three of us cannot make Jason, it. Jason got into the, the studio today, and you're in a handful of leagues, like a lot of leagues. Yep. And he didn't know how any of them went except for League of Records. I had started. not checked on another league this whole weekend. It, oh. They were irrelevant. I found out that my 8-1 and one Super Dynasty team lost to the 1-8 and eight uh, worst team imaginable. <laughs> they don't even have. I, I lost to Zach Moss. He didn't, oh, he didn't score a point. <laughs> that's that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I, speaking of which, if you if there was a victory left to be had, Zach Moss is back where you like him. Yeah, yeah. On and, the bench. <laughs> we have a, we had a very busy week of fantasy football. Some wild games. Uh, shout out to my boy Mike. The fantasy hitman with the call of the year <laughs> that has paid off hugely for my teams. I took you. I this is how seriously I take you, Mike. Mike came out uh, over the bye week for the Dallas Cowboys. We had a show, second half sleepers, and Mike went to bat for Dak. It's not not always the easiest thing to do. And Dak in has, this economy, Dak has been the best fantasy quarterback <laughs> in the league. I. Took it so much to heart that I traded Mike Tua, and went and signed Zach off the, or Dak off the waiver wire. 
I'm uh, delighted. Yeah. Dak Prescott yep. over the his last four games was the quarterback one, the quarterback three, uh, the we, quarterback two. He, and, he may be quarterback two after tonight. And currently the quarterback one, yes. If you think he's going to be the quarterback two after tonight. No, I don't. I'm just saying that technically. He, he scored 50 fantasy points in our league, and he did it in basically two quarters because he didn't score any fantasy points in the first. And then he he was taken out in the fourth quarter with like 11, 12 minutes left. But also in the third quarter, when the game was done, and they could have put Dak on the bench for the whole entire second half. Like, what should we do? Let's throw. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep, it was great. Let's keep throwing to CeeDee Lamb. And then they took Dak out, and they're like, what should we do? I don't know, we should probably throw it to CeeDee Lamb. Oh, Mike was getting the knife <laughs> twisted. <laughs> CeeDee Lamb has been the best fantasy player out of all players He's, over the last four weeks. Yeah, because this is what you do. Yep, you've hey, been saying it forever. Hey, Dallas, look what happened. You have an above-average quarterback. You have an, It was superstar wide receiver. Let's find out what happens when we throw to him nonstop. Oh, I, we score a whole bunch of points. Yeah, and the, they, the verdict is in. A lot of players getting involved. Brandon Ridiculous. Cooks had 179 yards. So yes, because when you throw to your superstar <laughs> nonstop, the team goes, we can't let him beat us again. That's that's the decision that they make. The, the entire play is do not let Ceedee Lamb beat you. And then as long as anyone else on the team is competent. They get easy layup receptions. I don't know if you've seen this. Ian Harditz has tweeted it a couple weeks in a row because it, it stays true. But the best three fantasy, the best three yards, and uh, I think it's yards. It's the most yards yeah. over the last, I believe, month. Over the last month are the three wide receivers that were on the Dallas Cowboys. It's CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper, and Noah Brown. Oh, that's And funny they were all me. together on the practice field, and he keeps posting the picture of it. But yards over the past three weeks, all three of them saying like that could have been your team. <laughs> that was, I mean, look clearly the Amari Cooper getting rid of him, I think was a mistake. Yeah, for sure, he's because great. he's still been a great player. Yes, and they cut Zeke. Yeah, like a year later. It was, yeah, they could was, have let Zeke they made a whoopsies uh, go and kept Amari Cooper. All right, lots of reactions to the weekend. Obviously, this is one of my favorite shows because we just get to, I don't know, like we we consumed all the games together, mm -hmm. but then like we power down because we have to and our, our brains melt and then we get to come in here in the morning and just react and you reacted as well because every single week we throw up our monday punday thread where you react to the weekend the good the bad and we get sophisticated mm -hmm. and read yeah. out some of our favorites yes. let me start here with jameer valis gibbs <laughs> mike evans almighty or yes. jalen scoring yeah he was good or um <clears throat> CD's touchdowns. <laughs> TD Lamb. You've heard of Devin Singl Singletary. How about Devin 30 carries? <laughs> Career high. Wow. And uh, everybody's favorite. Oh, national hero. Joshua Dubs, baby. Uh, my favorite is actually Amon Ross St. Bowling. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you take these next two. Yes, yes. Yay, McBride. And of course, the exact same thing, but <laughs> hooray, McBride. Hollywood frown. Mm, and mm. how about phony Pollard? And we've been waiting a while to break this one out. Sam Laporta potty. Yes, and uh, derelict Henry. <laughs> like down, uh, Calvin Midley. Oh, the kids will be upset. Saquon Fartley. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's my yeah, favorite one of the day. Yeah. Saquon Fartley, dude. <sighs> he is. The only player on that team that can do anything. He is a straight-up sacrificial lamb. I mean, he is just being offered as sacrifice yeah. over and over and over. He is playing for a high school team in the NFL, and they are just saying, I'm afraid you take the ball and get tackled. It's uh, it's impossible to watch. It really is. Phony Pollard. Let's talk about him for a second, Mike, yeah. because uh, there, were, there were a few bets or uh, – last chances that were handed out on the show last week one of them was to neither went well quentin johnston well, he, he was four down. me and jason made a five for 50 bet he was four for 34 and a touchdown you did pay up thank i you. did pay i was so, hoping you'd refund some for the touchdown but you didn't yeah no i'm uh i, <laughs> like I will, bet's a bet right <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, come on but um, then uh what about the uh you know 
phony Pollard, like you you said, yeah. if he didn't do it this week, like I saw somebody this morning, they posted, I'm so tired of Tony Pollard. I traded him this morning for Jerome Ford. I love Jerome Ford's end of season schedule, and I'm tired of Tony Pollard. I completely understand. And for me, the rest of season looking forward, Tony Pollard is – he. it's just – adjusting what I believe that Tony Pollard can become. Uh, he's still an okay play, okay-ish. He gets the Carolina Panthers next week. It's a really good matchup. I and mean, we, we've said that a few times for Tony Pollard. Hey, we're in a great matchup here. I mean, it was 49-17 to 17 against the New York Giants. Tony Pollard should have had a – I mean, everyone scored. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone scored on the Dallas Cowboys. Tony Pollard on a couple of carries looks good. But he ends 15 for 55. That's 3.7. Rico Dowdle, at, I mean, it's the end of the game, of he course. Scored. But, but Rico Dowdle looked like he had juice. I mean, from my, you know, the, the view from living in my mom's basement, I don't know what these run calls that Tony Paul, it, it seems like bad strategy of how they are using him, but perhaps it's everything put together. Bad strategy. Tony Pollard is still not. The same player after the ankle injury. Like, don't forget, he had massive surgery, and maybe he just he doesn't have the he doesn't have the explosiveness play after play. He, you know, kind of his meter runs out or something. But for moving forward, it's he is just a running back two ish. There was it a feels like there was a point in the game yesterday where Dallas had scored thirty five points, had four hundred sixty two yards, and Tony Pollard had no touchdowns and forty nine yards. I mean, it, 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 this is just going to be... The no targets is really... That's a massive disaster. It's going to be added to the annals of history. Is going to be filed away in the archives of um, players that look like they're going to have every opportunity to step up and dominate the league, a la Lamar Miller getting traded into a workhorse role in Houston from his explosive role in Miami, and Tony Pollard's now part of the story. And the cursory tale of, like, if you thought Rico Dowdle was going to be a threat to Tony Pollard before the season, then then you're the only one because we all thought it was clear sailing, run-heavy team. The, part of it, they're throwing around the goal line, and it's working. Mm -hmm. Fergie getting into the oh, end yeah. zone. Dak rushing touchdown. I don't – look, I, I, think, uh, I think there's some very difficult decisions to be made for fantasy teams as trade deadlines hit – uh, in this upcoming week or two when it comes to Tony Pollard. Yeah, I mean, Tony Pollard has not been okay. He hasn't been, like, average, not giving you what you want. He has been crushing you. Uh, since week four, he's averaging 7.9 fantasy points per game. I, I mean, he, he's scored fewer points than Ezekiel Elliott, Jaleel McLaughlin, Antonio Gibson. It, this, is, this is someone who has really really destroyed you it is not coming through and it's not like I, I heard it said a lot that it's like and it, it is true how many touches he's had without a touchdown and so you think well that the problem is just touchdowns but it's not just that like for some guys when it was Jacoby Myers or Deontay Johnson without their touchdown run they were still really good getting a ton of work a ton of receptions they just didn't get the touchdowns Tony Pollard's been bad ineffective inefficient He's, you know, 3.6 a carry since week four. So Two goal line carries against the Giants. Stuffed on both. He's had opportunities. He just has been bad. So, I mean, you've got to adjust your expectations. Like Mike said, this week against Carolina, I don't know how you could bench him. Yeah. But maybe that is one of those things where you, you do tr it's try a, to trade bear him trap. on the name. Maybe you make sure Rico Dowdle's on rosters. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, we do have news to jump into before the studs and duds. Alexander Madison left early with a concussion. And since that uh, exit, which hurt fantasy players, obviously, the Vikings are signing Miles Gaskin back yeah, to they got him back. their practice squad. Uh, of note, um, the, the split, because... That was the that was my big question of Alexander Madison with Cam Akers gone to season ending injury. Do they go back to the week one? Well, he he's truly the workhorse getting everything, or do they actually try and get Ty Chandler 
involved? And the answer was they tried to get Ty Chandler involved before uh, before the concussion. We had 30 snaps to 17. So Ty Chandler was getting work. And Wildcat? Ty, and yeah, he got a Ty Chandler got a Wildcat touchdown. Chandler is has juice, and we've been seeing throughout this NFL season, at at the very least, these smaller guys who have juice, it's working. So he is going to Ty Chandler. Hopefully, you picked him up last week because we had, were saying you Ty Chandler is a guy you got to pick up. He goes from a speculative ad to he will be the hottest player on the waiver wire for a one week rental. Or maybe more. Derek Carr exited with a concussion as well and a right shoulder injury. There is hope that he'll return after the bye. Saints on bye this week. Michael Thomas left early with a knee injury. I believe that hope is from Saints fans, <laughs> not from fantasy football managers. Because Jameis Winston yeah. is a gift. I mean, that guy is crazy. I mean, he, he just, is like a blind slingshot. I mean, it awesome. is a he will just chuck, man. The numbers for, for Chris I, Olave. I have. Do you have them? Yeah, it's a, a tweet from Adam Harstead. Chris Olave with Derek Carr in 37 minutes. One target. One for 15. Your, your elite, your CD lamb, Chris Olave here with one target in 37 minutes. And, I mean, you, you might be surprised to hear this. It was not working. The Saints offense was not working. Fire in Jameis Winston. In 20 minutes, nine targets, seven for 79 with an incredible touchdown reception, and that includes a 24-yarder call back to penalty. Like, Derek Carr, what are you doing? What well, are you doing? I, look, it's it's it's. I think you're screwed on both sides if you're the Saints because we already know this Jameis Winston chemistry. Like, the it doesn't work, you know, for victories. It works oh. great for fantasy. He should have had uh, four interceptions, I think. Probably six. I mean, there's, <laughs> there has literally never been. You know, there's always a lot of debate like, oh, we're, we're talking real football, not yeah. fantasy. A lot of times when we're, like, when we're arguing against Arthur Smith about what's efficient, what's effective, yeah, we care about it from a fantasy football lens, but it's also what works in real football. Like, you're hurting your team. Jameis, Jameis is the biggest, cl most clear example of – fantasy versus reality he is terrible I mean you're not going to win with Jameis he is terrible there's but a reason no, none of these 16 teams that needed a quarterback traded for him oh but man do fantasy managers love that dude because nothing helps you throw more than a pick six just yeah just come yeah. on oh, I love Jameis yeah I mean the, the numbers are crazy for for Olave so we'll see though you got a bye week Mac Jones benched on the final drive Bill Belichick says he's going to take a look at everything across the board including maybe getting Zappy in there. Said including some life choices. Yeah, I mean, I, at this point, the best life choice for Bill Belichick's future is, I, I is think, Drake May or Caleb Williams. Or so, Drake. continuing to play. I was going to say, I think it might be. You think Bill's done? I don't think so. No? No, no, no I don't think so. I, I, I think he, maybe he should be, but I don't think I he I think is. the probability is rising every single week. You could be right. I mean, this is uh, a mess. Mac Jones, I mean, you suck. Oh, dude. <laughs> I mean, I I started Sunday Live. I mean, the the prestigious live event, yeah, for fantasy football on Sunday morning. I started with a, a full apology to all of our German NFL fans because the product that we sent them on that Sunday morning was atrocious. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, bad. And then this is a big one, Devon Achan. Mm. He's been designated to return <laughs> he is. from injured reserve. The window is open. The last we heard from. Uh, Mike McDaniel was that so far so good. We need to see how practice looks this week. Uh, I, I think that there might be a, a very small trap chance going on just because we saw him come back from injury once before and they took a week or two. Yep. But, and, and they have Jeff Wilson back this time, he's, but he's on the way back. He's going to be probably the most interesting and one of the highest, like, if, you know, when we're doing Sunday live, which I believe will be me this week. Mm -hmm. I would imagine Devon Achan's name is going to be one of the highest searched for players because what do you do? He could play three snaps and it would be worth it. Yeah. I, it, I can tell you what Jason's advice will be. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Live. <laughs> live. Just start him. And put Sunday, him in your lineup. Sunday live. <laughs> L-I-V-I-N. There ain't no living better than Devon Achan living. Yeah, that's fair. So right now, just to throw it out there, uh, Zach Moss or Devon Achan? I'm going to go Devon Achan, and I'm okay. going to guess his stat line at the end of the game 
will be two for 78 and a touchdown. I mean, it really could be. It's the Raiders. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Studs of the Week, presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. All right, Dak, 26 for 35, 404 and four. Unbelievable. He's on fire. And, first, a, and a rushing touchdown. First five weeks, he had never finished higher than quarterback 17 and had 58 points over uh, five weeks. Last two weeks, he has 66 fantasy points. <laughs> it has been delightful. I love it. I mean, quarterback matchups, they are very important. But what have I told you as Carolina, Washington, Seattle yeah. the next three weeks? Oh, um, I would say that's why he was my second half yeah. sleeper. I mean, <laughs> he's available for trade. Uh, Justin Herbert, 27 for 40, 323 and 4. He is figuring it out. And that normally means Keenan Allen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but this is this is good. Green Bay, Baltimore, New England on the horizon for him. Joshua Dubs. Oh, dude, man. I mean. Really, really interesting fantasy conundrum with Joshua Dobbs because he's been very good. He's got a lot of high-end performances. In fact, his last three games started, quarterback seven, quarterback five, quarterback three. He's got weapons. He's what got a, a great matchup. Justin Jefferson should be back this week maybe. Yep. So – or is this someone that you're rolling with? Like you're, you're picking him up, starting him. I, yeah, probably. I, did, yeah, I think you can. The rushing baseline, yeah, he, is so second so most nice. rushing yards for a quarterback right now. Yeah, and he's got. I mean, he he has special skills when it comes to evasiveness. Like he's he's just able to identify when it's time to go. Since week one, he can has, you take yeah, his, his, me his social higher. social media game is is. Elite. Well, he's a smart dude. Since week one, his seventeen game pace would be seven hundred rushing yards. Yeah. That's that's you know it's better than the rushing quarterbacks of like Josh Allen and I mean that's an elite number. Uh it is, and they don't have any running backs either. So I think yeah. they're gonna give him a lot of opportunities. They, they might have one. Ty, Ty Chandler looked good. Yeah. I mean, I, I, Ty Chandler looked fast. I yeah. don't know that he's going to be breaking a bunch of tackles and uh, pushing piles, but if they can get him in space, he he has juice. Another fun start sit guy for this upcoming week will be Ty Chandler. Sam Howell, 29 oh, for 44, 312 and three, uh, finishes the quarterback four uh, before tonight, and just got it done. What quarterback do you think he is right now on the course of the season? The whole season, he's the quarterback he one in fantasy. Has been on a he's been on his own heater since week five. Uh, I'm no gonna, bye week yet. I'm gonna go. That's fair. No bye yeah, week. Yeah. So this isn't per game, just total fantasy. Oh, points. he's got to be a top five. I'll Has go, to be. I'll go six. QB six. Quarterback three. Yeah. What? Without no bye week though. Right. Right. Yeah. Quarter, yeah. But, but I mean, points per game. Quarterback nine. Top ten quarterback. That's still. That's it's still a, bad. It, it's. Pretty cool. Yeah. And and what they did to their defense uh, is glorious. I mean, they, they got rid of their defensive line. The Seahawks ended up winning that game. They gave up I mean, 29 points, had to keep throwing. and Yeah. You know. uh, maybe maybe next time throw to your wide receivers, though. Geno yeah. Smith, Brock Fair. Purdy, Jared Goff uh, all ended up with good games. A couple of those were starts of the week. A couple of them it took a long time to get there. Geno's game was awful until it wasn't. Goff, same situation. Uh, and there's your studs at the quarterback position. Quick break, coming back with some running backs. Well, uh, he continues. Officially on fire. Jameer Gibbs, mm -hmm. 14 for 77, two rushing touchdowns, including a goal line opportunity. Yes. Five targets, three for 35, like, if you had me bet over under three for 35 on Jameer Gibbs the rest of the season every game, I think he's going to be better in that receiving it, game most often. So this was a huge performance. I would agree. The, the, so this is extremely important to pay attention to. There's one of two truths here. Either this is the new normal because David Montgomery was healthy. He practiced in full all week. He looked great in the game. He had a monstrous, huge rushing touchdown. 
And so if he's fully healthy and they're saying they're not limiting him at all, well, he was the backup. Jameer Gibbs played uh, 58% of snaps to 38% of snaps for David Montgomery. They used Jameer Gibbs in on the goal line. Not always, but they never used to. If this is the new normal, then Andy, you're my guy and Jameer Gibbs is going to be a league winner. Although, this could also be the first game back for David Montgomery. We're going to limit him, and then it and it flips. What, what are you guys – I mean, Andy, you were saying before this week you thought that this – would be the outcome so I would imagine after seeing it you have to believe that this is the new normal I I thought that the team would take an approach rest of season of protecting David Montgomery a little bit more than they had I think they were forced into that level of volume for Montgomery due to classic rookie running back limitations like you're learning how to do the little things like what Austin Eckler talked about with Jameer Gibbs and his how electric he was but then how he would miss some of these obvious things. I don't think 58-38 makes any sense. I think it's going to be much more 50-50 type of situation, hot hand to a degree, kind of comedic that Gibbs gets a couple of goal line opportunities and Montgomery gets the runaway 75-yarder <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. because you would kind of profile them to be the opposite. But I think both players are – I mean, this is a high T, hit you in the mouth, piss off the Jared Goff owners around the goal line, like Mike, and just win by sheer will type of team. And that's going to involve both these guys. They're both must-starts rest of the season. And I'm thrilled for those that stuck with Gibbs through the, you know, often time, it's the pattern for rookies, but it doesn't make it any easier to swallow when you get off to a slower start. Jameer Gibbs at this point, he's got to be a top, what, 15 running back even on the season. He's finished 3-2-1 over the last three weeks. Oh, yeah, he's he's certainly up there. Uh, right now, on the course of the season, he is the running back 15. Yeah. But and he also before, missed two games. That's before this week, too. That's, uh, that's including this. That's week. including oh, okay. this, this, but that's that's missing two games. Right, I, right. I think it will balance more, but it, the, it was great to see Gibbs allowed to finish because like, he was the one on the drive that got them to the goal line. It's, it's nice. Like, reward reward the, the rookie with an opportunity, at least. Uh, Jahan Dotson, six for 119 and one. Oh, wait, that was Brian Robinson in the passing game. Six for 119 and one. He only had eight <laughs> rushing attempts for 38 yards, and Brian Robinson had a great wide receiver game. Because Brian Robinson, yeah. elite pass catcher. Let's talk about some career highs. Most carries, most yards in the history of his career. Devin Singletary, 30 for 150 Dude. and one. I mean, the Texans. Holy crap! Like the on on Sunday live, people there was a lot of C.J. Stroud questions, and I I mean I was pessimistic. I, I want a jersey on this of back Stroud. wall of Stroud, Brooks. Uh, Make it a priority. I was pessimistic, and this was full results over process. Like the results were, C.J. Stroud was actually he was okay for fantasy, but his fantasy line did not indicate how dominant he was against the Cincinnati Bengals on the road. Like and including Devin Singletary here with the the huge performance. Not sure how many people were willing to go back with Singletary after his you know last week when he had all the opportunities and everyone in the Texans was great and Singletary was hot garbage. So congratulations if you got to start him. But I mean the the Texans. I and think it Stroud, is. It, it is time. was it was so incredible. I think what it's, a game. it's been a long time since we did the party music. Oh, for us receiving DeAndre Hopkins from the Texans and their misery. Uh huh. Uh huh. After watching CJ Stroud, can you find that music oh. for us, please? Because have a Stroud party. I'm giving a Stroud party. Hey! Hey! All right. Okay. Congratulations, Houston. Congratulations on ridding yourself of Deshaun Watson. Congratulations on picking the right quarterback. Congratulations, Congratulations. on having the team above you pick the wrong quarterback right right in front of you. Man. Unbelievable. And right. now, and now, uh, we Cardinals fans, we we get Kyler Murray back, who came back, looked great, and this next week, C.J. Stroud v. Kyler Murray. Yeah, oh, and we didn't that's we didn't bring up Kyler because his his fantasy line was around twenty points and not a full stud category. But it's worth a a brief moment to talk about what the Cardinals' offense was able to do. Number one, the most important thing, 
defeat Arthur Smith, yeah. the arch villain of the universe. You're welcome, America. Who's trying to grow his mustache back? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because he saw himself. And uh, and then he'll go, and then he'll shave. It's just going to be a whole cycle. I mean, he to be fair, he grew up faster than I could grow my hair back. So <laughs> it's because of the tea, Andy. But number two, I mean, Kyler was exceptionally mobile, mm -hmm. evasive. All the things that you wanted to see. The only thing you didn't get out of this game that you wanted to see was the involvement of Hollywood Brown because he had one catch. Yeah. He was just missed on a bomb. Uh, but the Cardinals are going to move forward with Kyler, and I think he's going to be himself. Kyler is going to be a great fantasy asset. The Arizona Cardinals defense is bad. He looked fully healthy, 33 rushing yards. Totally, like Andy said, very evasive in the pocket. Was able to connect with Trey McBride a ton. And it, currently he's the, the quarterback 12 on the week. I expect Josh Allen will probably make him the quarterback 13. But um, he should have had a, a – or was very close to having a, a much better game. Michael Wilson, touchdown called back on the inch line. And then they put in Clayton Toon uh, oh, for the, yeah, for that, the tush yeah, push did. on the goal line to kind of – they're not going to have Kyler do the tush pushes right now. Uh, back to running back Singletary. You know they play the the Texans play the Cardinals as you just mentioned. I have Singletary and Damian Pierce, and I am actively rooting for Pierce to skip another week. Oh, for sure. What the Cardinals are a tremendously bad defense against the run, and I would love Devin Singletary to get this much work. What do they do even if well, if Pierce is healthy? Yeah, because Pierce is not. He's not really flashed this year. We already saw like when the last time Pierce was healthy. Singletary had kind of that one game where he overtook him in uh, snaps and opportunities. Just is Devin Singletary the starting running back? I mean, we are a week for now. We're yeah. a week from uh, thirteen for twenty six for Devin Singletary as well. So I think he's got the tr seeing the relationship he has with that head coach. Like I've seen that behind, uh, you know, in the locker room. Damian Pierce is beloved by this team. I, I have no doubt that he's going to get the majority of the opportunity when he's healthy. Yeah, I think it'll be. 60 40 day, uh, where Pierce is the 40 uh, that's that's at at best I think you're saying the opposite thing as me then you said yes but Pierce is going to get the majority and then you oh. said yes he'll get 40 percent no I I, I I believe that it will be Singletary so no no no, no I, I think it will be it will be Pierce uh, in week one no I when he's healthy I said so if he's healthy then yes but if he's not healthy then no and I don't, it's hard to know that in the first week you come back from an ankle. Yeah. Week one, you're probably right. 60-40 in week one, it makes sense. The last time we saw these two players together, it was basically a complete 50-50 split. They played one snap different between Devin Singletary and Pierce. Yeah. Uh, Austin Eckler. He's getting it done. Four, uh, four for 48 through the air, 19 for 67 on the ground and a touchdown. Kenneth Walker, welcome back, 19 for 63. Had the big 64-yard reception it, on his only reception. It seems like for Walker... Would you trade him after this? Uh, no, I think I would hold on to him, but he is he's big play reliant. Oh, for sure. I mean, he, he always has been. He just usually comes through with them. I, I would be interested in seeing if I could capitalize on it. Um, the Rams, the 49ers coming up, and, and Charbonnet more and more involved. Charbonnet again out snapped Kenneth Walker so if I could capitalize on a good performance and and uh, get someone I felt more confident in at running back I probably would do that Jalen Warren and Najee Harris were both dominant uh, both scored uh, both were efficient both caught passes Jalen Warren Ian Hart has put this out another nugget um, Jalen Warren among the 46 running backs with 50 plus carries this year number five in yards per carry number seven in yards after contact, number one in missed tackles forced. I retweeted a post this morning that Jason had shared with me, and it was hilarious because somebody tweeted a video of Jalen Warren, and it said uh, he, yeah, yeah. he's just mashing buttons because he's in the open field and spins for no reason. <laughs> just a spin Like move. someone hit the spin button, uh, number one in explosive run plays. This is the new Rawls Royce. Royce. I mean, it really is. He runs with such reckless abandon. It is so fun to watch. But to get a fantasy production uh, situation out of him finally, delightful. It, it is nice. It was a little bit predictable, though, because the Green Bay Packers defense is extremely bad at stopping the run. That's why everybody succeeded. Going forward, they go to the Cleveland Browns, to the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm not 
excited to start these guys. Although it is worth noting, Najee now has three touchdowns in his last four games, three oh, of four man. weeks as a top 12 And the running temperatures back. are going down. Well, right. I mean, maybe he took a little bit of the, the cold weather magic from, from Derelict Henry. Yeah. Uh, McCaffrey, Bijan, Rashad White, Foreman all had good weeks. Uh, we just got to pause real quick to, uh, on Christian McCaffrey. Special shout out, yeah, to Kyle Shanahan. Uh, they were destroying uh, the Jaguars, uh, thirty-four to three. Christian McCaffrey had been pulled. Uh, Brock Purdy had been pulled, and then Elijah Mitchell took them down the field. And Kyle Shanahan knew the streak was on the line. If Christian McCaffrey could take it and be in sole ownership of the touchdown record, the most consecutive weeks, and they put him in, uh -huh. and they gave him every, every touch, every touch. So it was, it was awesome. I mean, thank you. We we appreciate. He didn't get in, so it was a little bit unfortunate there. But the fact that the coach was like willing to put McCaffrey out there. I mean, the game is done. Christian McCaffrey could get hurt on these touches, but it was no See his these, comments. These records are important. These are the records are important to the players, so let the player try. Did you see him talk about it? I did. Yeah, where he's just like it was really nerve wracking because mm -hmm. he knew he could get hurt. Yeah. Uh, wide receiver studs: Keenan Allen, third time finishing as the wide receiver one on the week, eleven for one seventy five and two. He leads the NFL in receptions. He's on, he's on pace for almost seventeen hundred yards. He's a beast. And um, yeah, he's he's huge. Is not going to be taking a huge amount of his opportunities away <laughs> huge should have beat the line that you set for him on five for 55 if he could catch he did draw two pass interference penalties downfield mm -hmm. on those two drops yeah cd lamb brandon cooks uh welcome to the party brandon cooks nine for 173 lamb was 11 for 151 both scored cd lamb is the first player in nfl history with three straight games of 10 plus catches and 150 plus receiving yards he told A.J. Brown's record earlier in the year to hold his beer. And, um, I, uh, you know, it's hard. Like, Je Jefferson's one of them. Chase is one of them. But, like, Lamb, you know, he's one of those players that you can hyper-target and he's always open. Like, it, it doesn't make sense, but he just is. And so the schedule is so good for Dak, it is good for Lamb. Mm -hmm. Amon Ra, machine. I don't think he's had a game this year that's under double digits when he's been active. Eight for one, fifty-six and one. Um, there it is, right there. Eleven plus fantasy points in every single game. He is their Keenan Allen. Yeah, he's a younger, more explosive Keenan Allen. That's, and I believe that's pretty. That's pretty nice because Keenan Allen's great. Yeah, when Keenan Allen was uh, performing this well this week, I believe Kyle the Borgogan said his pants. Were obliterated, like they're gone for sure. They're gone. Yeah, I mean, like I feel he like he was the, fully nude. I feel like the pants, like in his dresser, right? Just, also exploded. They just, they just combusted. It's a real problem because he's <laughs> got to go to the store for pants, but he doesn't have any pants to wear to the store. He better have a long shirt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hope you got a nightgown. Yeah, <laughs> nice moo moo. <laughs> he owns no pants. But to be clear, um, Jamar Chase. It wasn't looking good, and then it was Jamar yeah. Chase, seven or uh, five for one twenty four. Did you mention one. the Mike Evans? Mike Evans, yeah, six for one. I should have. He's my guy. Six for one forty three, a touchdown. The wide receiver nine. He has hit the bye week and the worst drop touchdown. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, his was worse than Boyd. the The worst drop touchdown. They were about the same. They really were the same play uh, that you could possibly see. Uh, I saw a quote from him, and he said, it was "Like what happened?" And I, I didn't, I didn't see the clip. I just read the the quote, and it was he was thinking about which fan he was going to give the ball to. No, oh, for real? I mean, no. I'm, I'm sure he's just joking around, or was he? Oh, I don't <laughs> think he was. Man, he because, scored later, thankfully. But yeah, Boyd's was way worse because because of the impact in the game. Yeah, you, Boyd's lost. I'm just the saying, game I, like them. Mike Evans was was forward facing. Tyler Boyd had to. Yeah, Tyler Boyd was, was like three quarters eight for one seventeen and should have should have had the touchdown. If he had the touchdown, Jason might not even be here this no, morning. No, I wouldn't be because he would have been in in Jeff. He would have been depending on Gabe Davis for about ten points. Yeah, as of right now, all I'm depending on is for Gabe Davis to not get negative points, and I'm scared going into tonight. <laughs> can you imagine a world where they throw him a screen and he fumbles it? Oh, I can. Oh, I certainly can. And then. 
on that fumble, the reason he fumbled it is because he got, he got concussed yeah. and he's out the rest of the game. So follow along, Footland. Tank Dell, Noah Brown. Dude. Noah Brown has been a monster. And he is he was what? the recipient of every target where Stroud would extend the play, mm -hmm. scramble around, and then Noah Brown would just find space. Yeah, Nico Collins was out, but I mean, what do you do with this? Seventy two percent or greater snaps in three straight games. He's been very, very good. I think it's a matchup play, and it based but based the, on but the, the matchup health. against the Bengals would be like. I had him in here. In, here's what I want. DraftKings this week. I'm like, I don't feel good about this. I wondered about Noah Brown last week on the waivers. Now I wasn't in on the waivers show, uh, but I wondered about him because we didn't get to see what the real plan was for for him because he got hurt. Like at the beginning of the at year. the beginning yeah. of the year. So we didn't ever him coming back. All the evidence we had was limited. But it was like while he's active, he gets targeted a lot. What were you gonna say, Jay? Well, it, it's it's tough. It's not when I say a matchup play. I, I guess I'm I'm not speaking of just the opponent on the other side of the field, but what's going on in their locker room. Like at first, it was no Robert Woods, and it was like, oh, okay, so No Brown is getting opportunities he might not usually have. And it's like, oh, Robert Woods is coming back, but now it's no Nico Collins. If Nico and Robert Woods are back, does Noah Brown stay? 70 percent you know at that point i don't feel like i could start him if 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 the rest of the wide receiver core is healthy tyler lockett jason start of the week with an eight for 92 and one performance got that touchdown late it was nice to see because he got hit pretty hard early in the game olave with another touchdown he had zero zero points in the first half dude Derek Carr, get out of my life <laughs> Derek, garbage oh yeah 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 uh tj hawkinson 11 for 134 <laughs> and a touchdown all in the first half. 15 I mean, targets. And, and we got the old, well, TJ Hawkinson's dealing with some injury. He'll maybe be on limited snaps used in important situations. The important situations were oh. was the first half where, yeah. <laughs> where every pass was going to TJ Hawkinson and he was not stoppable. He's Joshua a 44% target share with yeah. Joshua Dobbs. Joshua Dobbs <laughs> targeted. 47%. That's insane. That's insane for a wide receiver. It's impossible for a tight end. But Joshua Dobbs targeted Zach Ertz way too much. Yeah. Targeted Trey McBride like crazy. Appropriately. Appropriately, yeah. yes. And then now is is hyper-targeting TJ Hawkinson. You, you, you could be completely confident in – I mean, I, this might be better for Hawkinson than Kirk Cousins. The, it could the be, amount yes. that he's throwing him. Uh, obviously, it'll change when Jefferson comes back. Jefferson will be the the one, but Joshua Dobbs getting it done. Kittle had the big touchdown, went three for one sixteen and a touchdown. And Trey McBride, there it is, nine targets, eight for one thirty one. The first Cardinal tight end with over hundred yards receiving since nineteen eighty nine. Since the eighties, yeah. What I mean, what year were you even born, Rap? Yeah, eighty eight, eighty eight. So pretty much like almost Rap's whole life. <laughs> yep, that Tra checks. That's crazy. Trey McBride, who's a player we Is that talked Jay about, Novacek? I mean, <laughs> as a as an absolute must pick up and stash through last week's uh, Clayton Tune experiment. Rest of season, I I don't have confidence in mo in many more players at the tight end position. I mean, obviously you got all the the big names, but he is going to be in the weekly start category with Kyler at least. Until Zach Ertz comes back. When Zach Ertz comes back, they will put him on the field. They better not. They will. They will. Oh, they, they will, will for sure. They're, and they shouldn't. It yeah, will. when you, you posted a poll, Mike, about what is Trey McBride? Yeah. Is he the next big thing? Is he uh, something to just ride temporarily? Is he not? Zach Ertz will be getting opportunities, period. And, and I, I believe when Zach Ertz comes back, Trey McBride will receive the majority of snaps, the majority of targets, the majority of yards between them. But Zach Ertz is going to take some. What if you, Zach Ertz isn't going to come out and just get no targets, no yards, and they're going to come at the expense of Trey McBride. I agree completely. Now, what if we were to send like a bunch of us, like I mean like a lot of us, congratulations on your retirement cards. Ooh. Oh, to Ertz? To Ertz. And maybe he could be convinced that he had made an announcement that he didn't remember making. Like Look, if we if he gets enough cards from the public, I am for whatever plan necessary to prevent the Cardinals from themselves. I already know that he's going to get at least one card from Trey McBride. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if we can get him to pile up, I mean, he's got he's got his whole future ahead of him. And I mean, if just watch watch the McBride highlights too. Like these are these are grown man 
receptions that he is handling. It's I I don't disagree that when Zach Ertz comes back, he will be on the field. It just is at this. All right, new plan. Like, the the season's gone. Let Trey McBride keep if getting we, better for if, next year. If we make Zach Ertz a podcast offer, like to be a host, okay? Because you know, Greg Olson, you know, he got yeah. dragged away by the broadcasting offer. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Can you work with him? I I will produce his show. Would you? Yeah. Oh yeah. The I'd Zach Ertz Daily Podcast. Yeah. He needs like yeah. No no to no, fill I'll, his time. If, I'd if, let him be in Deucer's Alley. Well, you want to? Are you cool with that? Are you cool with that judge? Are you cool with Zach back there? Maybe for one segment per show. <laughs> okay. Huh. <laughs> All right. Zach's thoughts. Um, hey, Zach, how good was Trey McBride this week? <laughs> I will say this is a team that is clearly playing for the future. Maybe um, there's hope there. So there is a little bit of hope that maybe they just say Zach Ertz is not our future. In fact, Zach Ertz right now has a $16 million dead cap for this year. If they cut him in yeah, this they, off season, it goes down to a $5 million dead yeah. cap. I would assume Zach Ertz is not on I'm, this roster. Next I'm going to lock that in. Let's play a new game then. Let's play a game called Trade McBride. Oh, okay. You just come up with that on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> would you trade McBride for George Kittle? No. No. Would you trade McBride for Sam Laporta? Yes. That's I a yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Would you trade McBride for Jake Ferguson? That is a really tough one. Dun, 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 I, dun, dun, dun. I'm going to say yes. I would trade McBride for Ferguson. Uh, I, I want the flames that Dak has been in the upcoming schedule, and Turd Ferguson's done it longer. So that means Hawkinson, Kelsey. Would you trade McBride for Dalton Kincaid? Ooh. There we go. All right, trade. Welcome McBride. to trade McBride. Uh, um, I would rather have trade Mc Trey McBride. I'd rather have Dalton Kincaid. The so Kincaid's going to have a great. But they both have the same tonight. situation, right? Like Ertz and Knox will come back. The, they will not take it all, but they will take some. The schedule for the Buffalo Bills is slightly better when looking at. Uh, uh, Schedule adjusted points. <laughs> the schedule. No, no. Uh, the the uh, oh wait, no. I forgot to click the schedule. Adjusted. Looks better when looking at the schedule. I was trying to find the right verbiage here. Um, that was just in points allowed. So schedule adjusted. The Bills are one spot easier than the Arizona Cardinals. The so Cardinals it's neutral there. Then. The Cardinals have two difficult matchups for the tight end position of Pittsburgh in Week 13, then the bye in Week 15. Sorry, we San have to go Francisco. to a commercial break. Could you just answer the question? What was the question? <laughs> uh, Trey McBride or Dalton Kincaid? Kincaid? Or, or Trey I McBride. will go Dalton Kincaid. <laughs> I want that to be your Jeopardy <laughs> answer as well. All right, thanks again to our sponsor, NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket, it's never been easier to keep up with all your fantasy players. Watch the rest of the NFL season for half the price at 174 when bundled with YouTube TV. Sign up at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. Terms and embargoes apply. No refunds. Let's get into the duds. Pooped in his big boy pants. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Expensive Dak Prescott. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, you got the floor, Mike. What? Uh, the quarterback dud, Trevor Lawrence, yeah. who was. Uh, Completed 17 passes for uh, 185 yards. What did he have? Two fumbles, seven rushing yards, and a uh, hot stat here. Good friend of the show, Scott Barrett. C.J. Stroud has exceeded. C.J. Stroud, rookie rookie quarterback, has exceeded 335 passing yards in back-to-back -back games. Trevor Lawrence has exceeded 335 passing yards just once in his 43-game career. There's a reason Calvin Ridley's in the duds every week. There's a reason. Or is there a reason that Lawrence is in the duds? Like, what, the both. Like the Calvin Ridley, that is a real chicken or egg. Trevor Lawrence has got to be one of the most rostered quarterbacks on sub-500 fantasy teams. He has been an it's unadulterated been, disaster. And very disappointing. Whatever the inverse of Jalen Hurts stepping into his own last year was, that's Trevor Lawrence. And, look, they're still a winning football team. Yeah, they're, they are a good team. But... Trevor Lawrence is winning more like Kenny Pickett's winning than he is 
the way that C.J. Stroud is winning. Yeah, I mean, on the course of the season, the entire season, Trevor Lawrence has not hit 20 fantasy points at the quarterback position. That's unacceptable. So, T-Law, T-Drop? Yeah, I mean, the... And La I, T drop. I I love <laughs> what? I think it was like a la di da. Yeah, you yeah. got it. You got it. Uh, it feels look, me. I love dunking on Trevor Lawrence just because of the the sound bite of the. Well, you, it's funny you guys that liking da- him. It's funny I'm, that and, Dak is exploding yeah. while Lawrence is and imploding. I I do defend Trevor Lawrence in the fact that the touchdowns just. Uh, this was this game was terrible for everybody on the Jags, but it's the San Francisco 49ers who upgraded their defense at the trade deadline but the touchdowns have gone to to Travis Etienne if if you if you take Travis Etienne's rushing touchdowns like of what's happened to Tony Pollard Trevor Lawrence would be dominating you'd rather lock about 15 quarterbacks into your lineup over Trevor Lawrence right now at this you, point Stroud probably yeah. Dobbs you know Purdy Howell Goff Howell um the, I mean, you'd be on the edge Josh with Ru- Allen, Ru- Russell Wilson. You'd be on the edge with that after right. you know. And we'll see what happens tonight. What do we do with the next guy? Lamar Jackson. Oh man, thirteen for twenty three, two twenty three and one. He did play the most difficult defense in the league this past week, and he dominated them. the The, the Baltimore Ravens came out and humiliated the Cleveland Browns. I mean, just absolutely wiped the floor of them, and then lost. And then lost to the Cleveland Browns, who came back. Yeah, it was well, that was a crazy game. It was insanity. The Baltimore Ravens, as a team, have three straight weeks, or actually four, four straight weeks of scoring thirty or more points. But the last three weeks, thirty-one against Arizona, thirty-seven against Seattle, thirty-one against Cleveland, and it has just—it's been a team victory in terms of the fantasy points are not going to Lamar. The last two weeks, Deshaun Watson has been the quarterback eight and the quarterback 13. Lamar has been the quarterback 18 and the quarterback 14. Oh man. So there you go. And there's a lot of frustration. Make it for Lamar. Um, And you can't bench Lamar. No, like that's not, that's not in the cards. I, I, you know, unlike Trevor Lawrence, who you, you just named you can bench all him for these. Dak. If you got Dak off the waiver wire, you can do that. Sure. Sure. Yeah. In, in the you can bench him for Purdy. If you'd like to match up better, well, I would have a hard time benching up for Purdy. I mean, I I before the season I was bringing up the fact it's been it's been an eternity since Lamar Jackson was the MVP season. Yeah, over the last and it's still been an eternity. He's, over the last, he's seven, still the QB five. I right? know, I know, <laughs> because for sure. his, because his highs are high. His I mean, highs are high, and that's where you know you you're gonna keep starting him, and you're not. That's why I wouldn't start Brock Purdy over him. Dak can go out there and score 50. He just did. You know, but I don't think that's in the cards for Purdy, whereas obviously Lamar can do that. But consistency-wise, it's really tough with a team that's good at running uh, touchdowns in over the last 17 games. There it is. You, I know where you're going because I was Jackson's, about to bring it up. Lamar Jackson's consistency rating on the Fantasy Footballers website is a D, 35.3% yep. of his Last 17 games. Gabe Davis drops back to pass. Yeah, yeah, it feels very Gabe Davis, except that quarterback. I think I think this is one of those things that we're going to have to have a real offseason discussion. Do you try to trade Lamar for oh, you Dak can, plus you, a bunch of stuff? Absolutely, dude. You can get that done. I, As a person who – I was the only doubter of the offense of Baltimore going into the year. And as that person, if I see Lamar on the other side of a trade offer – I'm tempted because the highs are so high, mm-hmm. and he's so fun to watch, and the team is so good. And the offense is dumb. The offense is dominating, right? Just not for <laughs> not the passing game for fantasy. He, I mean, he got he had one big play, the 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 Beckham touchdown too. I mean, this could have been way worse. It's crazy that two twenty three came along with that one play. Running back duds this week. It's some names that you didn't really expect to be here. Big boy names, Travis Etienne, Derrick Henry, Tony Pollard, Saquon Barkley. You poor chap. Great Sa- news for Saquon. He is done playing the Dallas Cowboys. It's amazing that, I mean, he was 13 for 66. He was actually, that's shocking. He did great. He did, I mean, Saquon genuinely, like, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you as as a human, as, as a man. You went out there and you did that's five a carry you, against you, Dallas. You did your absolute best. It was not fair. It is not fair what they're doing. They franchise tag you. 
and then they just say yeah <laughs> Dude, how do you 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 brought it up jay but how like if you're saquon barkley what does the, the week of practice look like i mean you're out there really busting your butt staying in shape make like mentally preparing to go out on a football field he's trying every, to make money man every time you're on a football field you know that physically you are going to leave in a worse situation than once you stepped in and you know and you're you, going to lose and you have no chance to win none three of those four guys are free agents right which henry pollard barkley uh Aren't all yeah. three of those free agents yeah the, pollard was a, a franchise he's tag. on a franchise yes barkley's a franchise tag we didn't bring him up in either in either uh, situation, but the Josh Jacobs, they just kept giving him the ball, mm -hmm. and eventually it worked. You know, and also a free agent. Like it, it's a little scary, I think, if you're in dynasty with those players, because I doubt there are four bona fide delicious opportunities, right? Like Derrick Henry's time atop the mountain is probably done. He's probably going to compliment somebody, but then you look at like Barkley and Jacobs, and they're young. And they're both fully capable of being the guy in an offense. But do you think that, you know, Pollard, Barkley, and Jacobs were all thinking they they have great opportunities next year? No, no. I, they should get, like, leadership jobs. Like, I, I bet you Josh Jacobs goes back to the Ve Las Vegas. Yeah, he could he could easily end up resigning there. It, it'll, it'll be very interesting where they go and whether they chase the money or the teams. I would guess because they're running backs, they've got to chase the money. So they're probably going to end up in poor situations. You know, you'd love to see someone like Saquon go and sign with the Bills for less money because they're not they're not going to pay up for you know a, a, to pay a superstar running back. But that would be fun, and I would be so happy for Saquon to have a chance to like go out and be part of a good team. Do yeah, I mean, it, it definitely seemingly couldn't get worse than the Devito situation right now. For for everyone that we just mentioned. I think Pollard is the one if in if I'm in Dynasty that I'm the most nervous about. Oh, I'd be out because yeah, he's on the franchise tag and this was his year to prove he could be that guy for a team and he is he does not have the stats to, or success to back it up. So he maybe he goes back to the Cowboys for for a cheaper deal, but his the the, the gamble that he has to do on the franchise tag, he is losing it right now. Also, uh, I think Danny DeVito needs to move out of his mom's house. <laughs> Maybe grow up a little bit, <laughs> Danny, because uh, it is, oh, it is hard to watch. Bad game by Giants. Aaron Jones after his first good game of the year because he wasn't facing me. Uh, Thursday Night Football, we talked about H yeah. Chuba and Miles Sanders already and Zach Moss. You've been deleted from Earth. Jason was dead on about that. Duds at the wide receiver position. We, we, we're running out of time, so... You don't have to, like, rest inside the sadness too long. Calvin Ridley, Deontay um, Johnson, George Pickens. The Deontay Johnson one is... One for 17. That one is unbelievable. How does Deontay Johnson... Is that Johnson, a buy-low opportunity? If if it presented itself for me, absolutely. The, the one that was the most surprising for me was DeAndre Hopkins against Tampa Bay. Yeah. I mean... Still 28% target share. Yeah, he had eight targets, but three for 27 against a very, yep. very yeah, weak yeah, yeah. and beat-up secondary that was just torched the week prior. Uh, Their pass rush just made it impossible. Yeah. Hollywood Brown just won for 28. That was another huge surprise. I, I He's certainly a trade-for target for me. Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm amazed that they got where they got in that game with no Hollywood. Yeah, you it's know a little. Why. Because of uh, Trey McBride. Because T. McBee got featured. Well, it was, he was also just a uh, hair away from a nice touchdown bomb. If you remember, he was just overthrown. Yeah, yeah. And yes. Was yeah, yeah uh, Kyler was still – he's a bit rusty. Yeah. No Mostert at practice today. What? Oh, they, but it's – That's normal. It's normal, but not for post-buy, perhaps. Yeah. And A-chan was at we'll practice we'll as see. expected. Um, McLaurin and Dotson. Dotson dude, was a goose. Dude, Jahan Dotson – He's like, Gabe, Gabe Davis, look what I can do. Jahan Dotson on the field, his highest snap share of the year. 95% of the snaps, two targets, no catches. Come on, man. It Come was, on. It was unbelievable. Uh, Christian Watson, two for 23. Uh, stop. Stop playing him. Stop starting him. Uh, there are people that I watched 
throw him into their lineup over much better options this week. Stop it. Yeah. Stop doing that. Yeah. I told you I told you last week, outside of that four game stretch with Aaron Rodgers where he scored, not predictable, not predictive. He had one top fourteen performance the rest of his career. Stop doing it. Jalen Reed's better. Well, that part no one's gonna agree with me with. Jaden. Jaden Reed. Yeah. Yep. Drake London, three for thirty six. Oh, man. Got man. me shamed this week. Chris Godwin, four for fifty four, not big. Andrews, Laporta, Ty, uh, Taysom Hill, and Evan Ingram all had bad weeks at the tight end position. Yeah, it's it's going to happen. Mark Andrews, obviously the most disappointing. Two for 44, looked fine, had a nice big run in there, but uh, not good enough. But again, that was the Cleveland Browns' amazing defense. What a win for the Browns. Mm -hmm. Huge. That would have been so fun as a Browns fan to pull that out. Yeah, it was a, it was a battle. But not though I mean you kind of thought that battle might end up, you know, 17-14. But it was it was a high scoring game. Both defenses scored. Mm -hmm. I had the hardest time this week deciding Browns, Ravens. Which one do I play? I have both defenses. They scored within a point of each other. Both had a defensive score. They're both very good defenses. And that does, you know, that that's been part of the challenge for Lamar at times. Sure. Is not having to stretch the field. They do a lot of slow drives down the field. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe maybe use Mark Andrews a bit more, and maybe you'd have won. Mike Mike would have appreciated hey, that. I I always say target your number one guy. Uh big big waiver show tomorrow. Don't miss it. We've got a playoff primer on Wednesday. One of Brooks's favorite shows. Brooks, you hyped up? Oh yeah. yeah see, he's he's hyped up. And uh, you can watch the show YouTube dot com slash the fantasy footballers. Go over there, click subscribe, support the show, and catch Sunday live. This week will be. Jason Moore taking you through the last minute tilt, his own and others, uh, this Sunday. And like I said, waiver show tomorrow. Don't miss a minute. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you to everybody at jointhefoot.com for helping us keep the lights on. And we will catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.